just got back from Padre a few uh, days ago. I guess uh, more than a week or two ago, actually. Um, while I was there, I had opportunity to shoot some sunrises, not something I normally do. And one of the photos I made, I thought I would show you how I processed it. I'm just going to go ahead and pull in all the raw files roughly from there. So I was out basically pre-dawn and the sun came up, standing out in the water. And there were some pretty charismatic clouds around in front of the sun. So it kind of looked like the clouds exploding, which I thought was pretty fun. But it was pretty bright and I didn't really want to put my 10 stop on because it causes weird 10 stop neutral density filter because it causes weird color shifts. So I ended up shooting this with a polarizing filter and a two stop medium edge graduated filter. Uh, if you see the vignetting up here, that's actually because when you put the polarizing filter on top of the filter holder, it causes some vignetting on my 28 millimeter lens. So uh, a little crop actually just solves that or I just leave it there. But so if you look through these photos, if you watch, the frame changes a little bit and then it settles down. So that first one we're going to get rid of because it's not the same. Now my exposure shifted a couple times in here. Um, I think because I was playing with different options at the time. But I shot a bunch of frames because I couldn't get a shutter speed that I liked. And I wanted the water to smooth out. If you watch, the clouds are going to move, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack this. I'm going to use the bottom part as the stack as the water, and then I'm going to pick one frame I like in the clouds. So, so my first step with something like this is, generally speaking, to come up with a processing that I like. And even though I used a... Really bugs me that in Capture 111 they have not had that editable as default because it was default before. Anyways, um, I'm going to use a, a digital graduated filter to knock this guy down a little bit more. Maybe another stop, stop and a half. So control shift C or command shift C, collect everything, command shift V. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll through and I'm gonna make sure, so like there, I changed my exposure a little bit. So I'm just gonna kind of match that with the other frames so they look about the same, that's about right. Control shift C to copy again, apply it to the darker frames. That one's not darker again. Actually, I'm not even sure I might have been on aperture priority or something here, which would be silly, but I turned around and this was going on, so I kind of jumped on it. No manual exposure mode, which is what I would expect it to be on. So, <laughs> um, I think I was just messing around with the exposure a little bit. Um, I graduated fills into the water as well. Okay. I'm going to use one of the features in Capture One that, that I really like, which is the ability to click on. Let me do that again. This little double arrow up here gives you the ability to copy just that setting. And then when you control shift V, command shift V, it's going to apply just that setting to everywhere else. You notice that the layers now are applied. Okay, so I could probably do more in Capture One with this. 
but honestly, this is pretty close. Um, my initial edit, I spent more time fiddling with it. But for the sake of brevity here, I'm not going to. So I'm going to use my output recipe for editing in Affinity, which is just 100% JPEG, 100% size, 100% quality JPEG, open in Affinity afterwards. Otherwise, it just leaves everything else the same. Um, I've got my own file structure where all this stuff goes into set directories. So that's all set up in this recipe. And then I always set my name to my image name when I'm doing this. So I haven't tested this yet. I'm curious in Capture 11 if they've made the output Nope, you still got to set it. The output location, even if you're not using it in your SP, you have to set it. One of the quirks. Okay, we're processing. Time lapse. Woo! Okay, that's done processing. So I'm going to finish closing the rest of these out because I don't actually care about having the JPEGs open. Uh, it's just convenient to use my affinity recipe because it dumps things in the right directories for me. So I'm going to go file uh, in Affinity Photo, file new stack. Select all the JPEGs I exported. Now Affinity can, in fact, bring these in as raw files, but then you don't get to do any pre-processing. And I like Capture One's processing of raw files much better than I like Affinity's. So I always, not always, but generally speaking, I'll process things into the JPEG uh, in the way I want. I could go to PSD or 16-bit TIFF, but honestly, it doesn't make all that much difference for most edits. So now you see it says loading up here, loading one document. And this will take it a second because it's going to try to align all of these. Um, I probably on this one could have disabled alignment because they were on a, a tripod and it didn't move and they were pretty well aligned. But I didn't uncheck that, so now we're waiting. Okay, it's loaded. So, what you're going to notice first off is the clouds look kind of weird because they were moving all over the place also. Uh, if you look at the difference in the water between these two, you've got this not totally smooth water. You don't have exactly what you'd have with one big long exposure, but you've got a much smoother. So if I go over to my layers over here on the right-hand side, there's a couple different blend modes. I've got mean, median, outlier, maximum, minimum, range, mid-range, total. These all do basically various mathematical operations. Mean or medium generally is going to give you the best results for something like this. I like mean, which means the average of every pixel across the entire stack. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to go back to Capture One, just because it's convenient to browse there. And I want to flip through these and look for one where I like the sky. I'm just looking at the sky. I mean, honestly, all the skies are pretty good, but I'm just looking to see there's some god rays coming out up here. Like I could go full flare, but I kind of like the ones where they're not flaring. That one right there. And then I'm going to do one other thing, which is I'm going to go over here to this layer. I could have done this before. I'm just going to bring my highlights down. Yeah, that's about right right there. So I'm actually re-exporting this file. I, I don't have to do it. I just did. I could actually just go find this one um, and load it. But so I'm going to go back to Affinity. Okay, so it's loading one document. There's the one I just did. Command A, Command C, copy the entire thing, paste it as a new layer. Okay. Quick select tool. Now, with this dark horizon it's going to do a really good job and I'm actually going to go back and just feather it because we have this this blend is actually going to be super easy rather than trying to blend along this edge of all these detailed plants right here along the, the marsh grass basically I'm just going to make the blend feathered across this black edge I'm going to create a mask, create that mask there 
Command D to get rid of the marching ants. So you see there's some artifacts here right now because of the way that selection was done. And I could refine that and I could fiddle with it. But instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my brush and I'm going to pick the white. 0% hard, 100% opacity. I got the uh, mask layer selected. This is actually a super easy blend because of the, um, you see that sharpen up as I go across it, because of this black band. If there were something with detail in it right here, I would have to be a lot more careful. And it would still be possible, but it would be a little more annoying. Okay, so there's that blend done. It doesn't look jump right out at me. It looks pretty good. And I've got water that's relatively smooth. So the next step that I usually do in this scenario is I'll take... There's a couple ways I could do it. I could, I could do a merge visible on everything which is what I'm actually going to do in this case because there's not really any more editing I need to do in between these two layers. So what Merge Visible is going to do is it's going to take the picture as you see it and make a pixel layer basically for you. There we go. So I have this pixel layer, and you notice it looks exactly the same pretty much as the underlying layer except for that white border, which I think is actually an artifact, not a real border. So now what I can do is I can clean up things like dust spots or like this little hair down here that was on my sensor. Okay, so I could, I could do a bunch of that. Um, there's a vignette here in the corner and I said I could just crop that out, but another solution actually is just to um, end paint that corner. And usually it does a pretty reasonable job. You see how it, it softened that vignette up just a little bit. This corner's got clouds in it, so it may do a weird thing here, but we'll see. Nope, much better. So since these edges don't really have anything that has to be human comprehensible, they're just abstract things, in painting does a really good job of just filling in the same texture and tones and colors. And then there's a final step. I usually zoom in and pan around the image, probably not quite this close. And I just look for dust spots. I could accentuate the dust spots by adding some clarity temporarily that I would turn off later. I was shooting at F16, so, and I've boosted the contrast, which means dust spots are gonna start showing up pretty much on every camera in the world. Look at the 2814, which is the lens I shot this with. Nikon has done something and changed their, their lens geometry. Most of their lenses are really terrible about showing dust spots on the sensor. Where, for example, I noticed the Canons don't show the dust spots nearly as much. And I think it has something to do with the way the light is coming out of the back of the lens, the way the, the optics work. And I've noticed my 105 and my 16, which are really new generation Nikon lenses, don't seem to have that problem. They're much more Canon-like in terms of dust spots on the sensor. Doesn't mean they're not there. They're just not nearly as egregious as they used to be. Uh, on something like my old 70-200 VR2. That lens, if you stop down to F11 or something, you're gonna see, it's gonna look like somebody shot black spray paint at your sensor. <laughs> it's cleanable, but it's just obnoxious. So I'm really enjoying this 28 because I don't have nearly as much of a problem with that. So now I'm at the point where if you look, so there's where we, there's where we came out of the stack. There we are. It's still vignetted pretty heavily, but that's kind of the, there's a sun in the center and this is not the sun, so it should get darker. Um, there's a lot of stuff I can do at this point. I could add curves and I might do that. Just add a little bit of curve to just make that a little more dramatic. Yep, like that. Um, I might have take out Got to be on the right layer. I'm just going to let this in paint this section right here and this signpost. Basically, just clean this line up so it looks a little more even. There aren't too many signs of human habitation. 
This is my truck right here. And I can tell you that it's not trivial to remove. It, it could definitely be removed. But I kind of like the fact that it's there because I was taking the picture. So I'm going to leave it. The spot right there, I think. That's it. So really simple process. Pull your raw files uh, in your raw editor. You can do it in Lightroom. I do it in Capture One. Process them. Make them all kind of look the same, but make them look like you want them to look. Export them all. File new stack. Mean or mean stacking does a pretty good job, and it basically does the equivalent of one long exposure over all that period of time. And then I just blended in one sky so I didn't get weird clouds. The reason the clouds look broken up like they did instead of being smeary was because those shots were not back to back. So that stack was taken one or two frames and then a little break when I messed with something and then one or two frames. If I had held the button down at nine frames a second or six frames a second, I wouldn't have had nearly as much sort of choppiness in the clouds. The choppiness I'm talking about is this right here. Um, you can see it kind of looks like the clouds have been shifted in the sky. So that's a function of the gap between the frames. So anyways, uh, really easy. Didn't have a way to slow the shutter speed down otherwise. And with digital, it's pretty simple to do a stack. And that's how you do it in Infinity. See you later.